welcome to this online course on uh, application of GIS in conservation mapping. Uh, this is the first part of session two uh, of module one. We will be looking at uh, target three. So maybe to just to give a brief overview of how target three came into place. Target three is one of the KMGBF targets. KMGBF targets have been uh, covered in the first session, but uh, just to refresh our minds, uh, KMGBF targets uh, 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 is part of the, the framework that implements the Convention on Biological Diversity. The Convention on Biological Diversity is a legally binding treaty that was established in uh, 1992 uh, during the Rio Earth Summit. So it had three objectives. So the first objective was conservation of biological diversity. The second one is sustainable use of uh, uh, components of biological diversity. And the third one was fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising from genetic resources. So uh, the convention established a framework that uh, uh, implements that actualizes uh, global the Kunming Montreal global uh, biodiversity framework that was established during COP COP15 in Montreal uh, in Montreal Canada uh, in 2022 so this uh, this framework uh, replaced the Aichi targets uh, that ran between 2010 uh, to 2020 so the vision of this uh, framework is uh, to live in harmony with nature by 2050. So the framework was established uh, to solve the, the problem of decline, declining biodiversity, uh, which was featured in the uh, IPBES uh, report. So what is target three? Target three aims at conserving 30% of inland waters and terrestrial ecosystems and 30% of marine uh, and sea and coastal uh, ecosystems. These targets uh, focuses on biodiversity and ecosystems, uh, areas of crucial biodiversity and ecosystems services and aims at uh, ensuring a recognition of indigenous and traditional territories, integrating uh, landscapes, seascapes, and, uh, and oceans in conservation, and also allowing sustainable use uh, of uh, bi biological resources and respecting the rights of uh, indigenous people and local communities. So the three approaches that uh, uh, in place to ensure that uh, target three is achieved. So one of them is uh, protected areas, establishing protected areas. So protected areas, these are uh, clearly defined areas uh, that are managed uh, to achieve conservation objectives. And then the second one is uh, uh, other effective area-based uh, conservation measures, so that is OECM. So OECMs are areas that are not protected areas, but uh, are, are managed or governed in a way that will achieve uh, conservation objective. And then the third one is uh, indigenous and traditional territories. So these are these are areas where uh, indigenous people live and uh, local communities and they still practice uh, the culture and tradition allows for conservation of uh, biological diversity within the uh, ecosystems. So why are we looking at uh, target three? We are looking at, uh, we are focusing on target three because protected areas and uh, OECMs uh, have been proved to safeguard habitats they have been proved to uh, safeguard uh, species uh, populations. Uh, they also deliver ecosystem services in terms of water purification, uh, carbon storage, it, uh, among others. They also provide uh, benefits to people, uh, including cultural 
and recreational facility, recreational services. So there, there are uh, about eight elements of uh, eight elements of the target, target three. So the first element is uh, to ensure it it has to ensure that uh, at least thirty percent of terrestrial and inland water areas uh, and thirty percent of seascape ecosystems uh, are conserved or protected. Uh, the second uh, element is to ensure it ensures that uh, and the, the area that is protected has a particular importance for biodiversity ecosystem functions and services. So these areas, these functions include uh, areas with the high species richness, areas with the threatened species. Uh, we also have uh, threat, threatened biomes and threatened habitats. We have uh, habitats uh, of particular importance and we also have critical habitats which are critical for ecosystem services. So the third uh, key element uh, of target three is uh, effectively conserved and managed areas. So uh, the areas should be assessed for uh, management effectiveness and ensure that uh, the protected areas are effectively managed. So the fourth, the fourth key element is the right of indigenous peoples and local communities. They have to be respected. The fifth element is ecologically uh, representative. So the, the, the protected areas and conserved areas have to have a representation of different habitats, different biomes. So in short, it has to be uh, to have at least a diversity in terms of habitats and uh, ecological conditions. So the fourth, the sixth element is uh, connectedness. So the area must be well connected to allow free uh, movement uh, of uh, wildlife, especially the animals from one uh, ecosystem to the other. So the seventh is uh, equitable, equitably governed. So the area should be equitably governed. So equitably governed, uh, it only means that uh, all the stakeholders must be involved in management and governance of the protected areas, and also ensure that uh, there is fair sharing of uh, costs and even benefits from the arising from the protection of the that particular protected area. So the last key element is uh, sustainable use uh, or sustainable use. Uh, with conservation objectives. So uh, the use of uh, biological resources from the protected area must be sustainable and also ensure that uh, the objective of uh, conservation is met. So uh, lastly, we look at uh, the indicators of uh, target three. So target three has a headline indicator of, uh, indicators are metrics that are used to uh, gauge uh, the achievement of target three. So target three has a headline indicator of uh, coverage of protected areas or coverage of the OECMs. So that's why we are looking at uh, 30%. So we are looking at the area, area-based coverage. So the component indicators are indicators that uh, uh, implement the headline indicator. And that is uh, we have protected area coverage of key biodiversity areas as a component indicator. We have a component indicator of uh, protected area management effectiveness, PAME. Uh, we have a, uh, an indicator of um, protected area connectedness, how connected the protected area is to other landscapes. Uh, we have a, uh, uh, an indicator of uh, protected area connectedness index. So this index looks at uh, the area of protected area versus the uh, area of uh, the protected areas within the country. And then we have the red list of ecosystems connectivity indicator. Uh, red list includes uh, looking at uh, how threatened the species are. And we have the number of uh, protected areas that have completed uh, at least site level assessment of governance and equity. So SAGE assessments. 
uh, as an indicator. And then lastly, we have a species protection index as an indicator. Thank you. For more details, uh, visit our RCOE community and uh, proceed to, to the next part of the session to learn more about protected areas and OECMs. Thank you.